The objective today is to describe how to navigate an operating system. So I'm going to try to make this uh, lesson that has a lot of like duh moments in it as entertaining as possible. And to do that, I'm basically going to use two resources, the link above and then my own Windows 10 operating system. The good news is most operating systems have the same stuff. so. In general, you'll be good no matter which operating system you're on or if you click this lesson because you're just trying to learn about operating systems in general. And the lesson will have many synonyms in it because the basics are the same even if they use different words for different things or for the same thing, I mean. See, I'm already being confusing and we just started. So to be less confusing, first I'll start with some examples. I think that will be the best way to show you what an operating system is. Most of you use operating systems all the time. You just might not have known that's what it's called, an OS. Then I'll give you the strict definition of what that is. Then we're going to talk about what a program is versus software. We'll talk about system software versus application software. We're going to talk briefly about sectors, bytes, and interrupts. I have a moment here where I feel bad for not talking about Unix, so I'm going to touch on that, of course. Another word that starts with a U is utilities. This is a big thing inside of operating systems. But the good stuff, the things you guys probably care most about, is applications. And last, I'll finish by uh, explaining the difference between a GUI and a CLI. So let's start with those examples. Are there any images here that you don't recognize? I'm thinking most of you know most of these. So if this is a bad question for you, how about this? Just list the ones you do recognize. We'll make this into a little bit of a competition here. So those are all operating systems. What are operating systems? Well, they are the software that supports a computer's basic functions, such as scheduling tasks, executing applications, and controlling peripherals. So in your own words, what is an operating system? If you don't know what a peripheral is, that's like a keyboard or mouse and camera, etc. When you're done with that, let's talk about what software is. The first part of that definition where it says the software that supports a computer's basic functions might need some clarification. So the OS is this giant program, which is like software, but speaks to the hardware specifically. The definition I gave you came from Google's dictionary, but there is a difference between programs and software, though they're small. I'm guessing not a lot of techies are going to be able to explain the difference to you. So what a great opportunity here to try to get smarter than everybody else. So let's do this. Without any words, this right here is the difference between a program and software. Or maybe I should say application software. So basically, an operating system speaks to the hardware. An operating system is a program. Anything that speaks directly to the hardware is a program, and then anything that speaks to the operating system, which will then speak to the hardware, um, those are application software. Okay, so what's the difference in your own words now? Now, we, you should know we've gone through these periods of times where operating systems are warring against each other. And Microsoft was even in court at one time because they were being accused of having a monopoly on operating systems. But seeing how an operating system, in my definition here at least, is just simply a bridge between the applications that are created and the hardware that they're being ran on, it makes sense that some bridges are better than other bridges. And for operating systems, they definitely are really individualized. So right here, when I was saying that the software, the operating system is a software that supports this stuff, and it says executing applications, for those students who are in my web design class or computer science class, and you guys built an app, get it, application? So you built this, the coding for it wasn't very difficult, so you're able to focus just on what type of code makes the app work and not worry about what's going on in the hardware. Thank goodness for operating systems, because that's just not something you had to concern yourself with. That was a layer of abstraction well below where you're working at. But like I was saying, there are different operating systems for different styles, and not only on desktops for like Linux, Windows, and Macs, but you also have operating systems on your smartphones, Android, iOS, even Windows. I wonder if you, for extra credit, can guess what Mr. H's uh, desktop and smartphone operating system of choice would be. 
So here we go with some semantics. I am sorry to do this, and arguing over semantics is kind of like arguing over whether something was a catch or not. Seems kind of ridiculous, but we're going to have to do it. I want to make sure you guys can um, talk the talk uh, in addition to being able to walk the walk if you have a job interview. You're writing a paper on this for some um, computer class in college. So when we talk about software, we're talking about um, one of two kinds. There's system software, which is operating systems, and of course, application software. In terms of arguing over whether something was a catch, if you thought I was going to use a picture of Des Bryant, no way, I am a Redskins fan. This was a particularly good catch by our new wide receiver, though it was in a preseason game against the Jets. At the time of this recording, we we're on the eve of the NFL season, and I can't wait. So all that talk about software at when, at the end of the day, software is or are just sets of instructions that tell the computer what to do. Now for the system software, aka the OS, this also includes telling the computer when to do something. And this is a concept called scheduling, but we don't have to go into that at this time. So let's get down into business. If you are taking notes in a notebook, this would be a terrific um, drawing for you to sketch out there. A good way to think of the operating system is as the resource manager. The OS transforms sectors of your hard drive. Uh, it transforms bytes and interrupts and ports into files, folders, processes, and the user interfaces with which you can interact. So some operating systems are just GUIs, and some are strictly on the command line, and some are a hybrid, and you can do either or. Now, Unix may be one of the most famous operating systems of all time, or at least for the programmers out there. Now, technically speaking, Mac OS X is basically an Apple version of Unix, so they have a lot of similarities, if not the same kernel, I don't remember. Unix is the OG, so you should have tons of respect for Unix. I have a ton of Unix books if you want to read through them. But in terms of educating yourself about Unix, I highly suggest reading forums like this, Unix and Linux on Stack Exchange. Just going through these topics can be super educational. Great way to spend a Sunday evening. Now there are some differences between Unix and Linux, but we're not going to go into those in this lesson. And actually the differences remind me of the differences between programs and software like we just covered, or at least system software and application software. But we'll save that for another time. All operating systems should have a utilities. So that is to say, these are apps that mostly deal with the way managing data happens on your OS. You can buy third-party utilities, which means a different company made them than the company that made the operating system. So for like the Windows operating system, clearly Microsoft created that. But you could buy third-party utilities to help you manage that operating system. And you can tell if an application is a utilities one because it'll have a symbol sort of like these. And then this is the coolest symbol I've seen. It popped up when I did the Google image search for utilities. And I have no idea what this is actually supposed to do when you click it. Because I do not have an Apple computer. If anybody wants to donate, let me know. But I just don't have a lot of experience with Apple. So extra credit if you could tell me what that image thing does when you click it. Here's some more Apple icons. We're going to talk about icons in a second, but that's a pretty cool icon for a disk utility. Not surprising, according to our definition over here, utilities help us manage um, data on the operating system. This would be helping us manage the data on a disk. So at the end of the day, think of utilities as a thing that manages, repairs, and optimizes data on a computer. So think right share in your own words, what are utilities? And I'd love for you to make an inference here. What could a manage, repair, or optimize mean in this context? Like, give me an example. Because sometimes when people try to make their computer work in a certain way, it reminds me of an old man yelling at clouds. The clouds aren't going to really respond. People don't really know how to make their computer respond to the, the wishes or desires they have. Oftentimes there's just so much power in that box, people don't even access a, even half of that power. Let's hammer down some examples of applications to finish up the lesson. There are many different types out there. Your imagination can be the limit. Whatever you could want to do on a computer, there can be an app for that. 
but the most common applications you'll find on all operating systems would be word processing apps, spreadsheets, presentation apps, and database software. And of course, some sort of game. Games are the best. Probably the first app you've ever used in your life was a game. So to give you a little bit more details here, uh, presentation software is used to make virtual uh, slideshows and usually have all sorts of exciting features for animations and sounds that you just couldn't do uh, with a normal slideshow. You guys might not even know that there were once uh, normal slideshows, that is pictures where you just show one picture after the other. You know what I'm talking about watch the movie Gremlins. Then there's database software. This is an advanced way of organizing complicated information in simple formats. Database is your electronic filing cabinet. So operating systems and programs have the same features whether they use Windows or not, but all computers running Windows will have these features with these names. So the screen you see after logging in is called the desktop. Most things on a computer are named after things in real life. So here on my desktop, I do have a, a folder and inside the folder is files or pieces of paper with things on them. I actually literally have a printer on my desktop here. I have pens and pencils, so if I wanted to use a word processor or if I wanted to create a document, I could do that too. Now for the database, that would be a se separate filing cabinet. You could probably see that behind me. And inside the cabinet, more files and more pieces of paper, hopefully organized in a neat and easily understood fashion. The so last thing here, just in case you didn't know this, um, icons are tiny pictures that represent a program, a folder, or a program function. There is a bar that is usually at the bottom of the desktop. However, it may be also on one of the sides. If you cannot see it, then move the cursor to the edge where it is and you'll be able to find it. This is called the taskbar and here it is. This wonderful, amazing taskbar is used for launching programs or opening the, opening the window of a program. A lot of people don't know on Windows here, you could just type the thing you want to open, like uh, Word, and you just type it and push. So that's kind of like a hybrid between the thing we're learning next, the CLI versus GUI. There are basically two big ways you can navigate an operating system. This whole lesson has been designed to teach you how to navigate an operating system. Now most of us out there are probably using what's called a graphic user interface. The command line is a very powerful thing as well. So let me demonstrate. Here is a, some graphics. I can click these icons and things will pop up. But if I want to type in commands, here I could type in CMD and open up a command line. In Mac this is called the terminal. And so, and it's also called Terminal on Ubuntu Linux. So I can do a lot of things. I can say like echo hi, and it'll say hi to me. I can ask for the date. There's the date. I can press escape and get out of that date so I don't have to enter a new one. I can change the color by just typing in color and a number. So there's lots of different numbers, lots of different colors I can use. If the screen is messy, I can clear it and start fresh. And here's the powerful stuff. I can open up files from here. So I could type in dir to see what's in the directory I'm on right now. And so I see there's a, a folder there called web design. So I can just type in a cd web design. And that uh, stands for change directory. So now I'm inside web design. If I type in dir, I, I can look at all kinds of files. And then if I knew um, what file I wanted to open, I'll just type the file name and it opens up. And now I can start working on that file and doing all kinds of things, okay? So if you know what you're doing, this command line is amazing because you can move much faster than you'd be moving by just clicking things with the mouse. It takes a little while to learn, so you'll have command line um, cheat sheets like this one. I used to have them hanging up in my um, office, but it's definitely uh, it's something that goes down to per personal preference. So in conclusion, let me just say that Linux and Unix tend to have a lot of small, highly specific components that do exactly one thing, but they do it extremely well. This makes them very customizable and very secure, but also less user-friendly. Nowadays, this is getting less true. Since they are so customizable, you can have a GUI on a Linux distribution nowadays. Ubuntu is probably the most famous one. 
But for that to happen, Linux has to get this Windows style desktop, which requires what's called the X Windows layer. And I'm quoting here, so this next part kind of confused me. It says that get a Windows style desktop in Linux, it requires the X Windows layer, a Windows manager, and sometimes a Windows decorator. Contrast this with what the Windows shell, that is Microsoft Windows, offers, which from a programming perspective or an app, like a software perspective, it's just like one big chunk. I'm not totally sure how accurate this description is because deep down inside that Windows has to provide the same kind of things. It makes me think of this cartoon here where the guy, Dave, constructs a homemade megaphone using only a string, a squirrel, and a megaphone. <laughs> That's kind of like you created an X Windows layer using only an X Windows layer of Windows Manager and a Windows Decorator. I don't know, hardcore Linux, Unix guys might think I'm silly for saying that, but that's the end of the lesson. That's how you navigate through different operating systems. I think back to the lesson and overall, what is this lesson a reflection of? Here's your DOL. Give me three things you consider tricky about an operating system. So for example, I would say something like a new person um, would have trouble doing something. So like, think about all the words we went over, the words like utilities, applications, and interfaces. Go ahead and say some what what would be tricky about manipulating one of these things. So essentially here you're telling me what you didn't know, but now you know.